Hello everyone, welcome to another Figma prototyping tutorial. In this video, we're gonna make a button with a drop-down menu that you can then hover over to get some kind of hover interaction on the individual menu items. And as always, if you'd like to save time and download the source file for this, check the link in the description, that will take you to my store. And now let's take a look at how you can create this in Figma. So here I have a blank file. So I'm gonna use the text tool by pressing T on my keyboard and I'm gonna type in with all caps button. I'm gonna make it slightly bigger, let's say 16 pixels. I'm gonna go for like um, bold, you know, you can choose whatever font you'd like. And then I'm gonna press shift A to add this to an auto layout, along with adding some kind of background, for example, black background with white text, and then adjusting the spacing, the paddings on the sides. Then I'm gonna duplicate this auto layout that we have created, and I'm gonna go to shape over here and select a polygon to create a little triangle like this. I'm gonna press command E to flatten this, then set this to wide. So this is gonna become our drop down menu icon. I'm gonna set the dimensions of this to 20 by 10 or maybe 16 by 10 and adding this to an auto layout as well. Um, it's again, gonna have a black background. I'm gonna name this auto layout drop down arrow. And actually, we don't we don't need the second copy of this um, button, so I, I'm gonna delete that. And then I'm gonna select these two and press Shift A again. So that means we have an auto layout with two nested auto layouts. I'm gonna name this button and then set the spacing to around 10 for now. And the horizontal resizing, I'm sorry, the vertical resizing of the drop down arrow that's gonna be set to fill container and centered like this so that it fills up the whole height. Next thing, I'm gonna use the pen tool and draw a line like this. This line is gonna be white. It's gonna be two pixels white. And then I'm gonna command X, cut this, paste that inside this button auto layout. I'm gonna place this between these two already present auto layouts and then set the vertical resizing to fill container. This is gonna stretch our line. I don't know if you can see the line actually, but it's right here. This is gonna stretch our line again across the whole height and then I'm ready to set the spacing of the button auto layout to zero. And we can see that we get a nice line here. I'm gonna rename this line to let's say divider line or something like that and reduce the opacity to 40 to just kind of make this very a, a very subtle line. Then I'm gonna also select the drop down arrow auto layout and make this a bit wider with like horizontal padding set to 14 or, or something like that. Um, the divider line could be, I don't know, even four pixels wide, three pixels, whatever looks best to you. But I think at this point we are ready to add some rounding to this um, button auto layout and maybe just go for like six, seven, eight, maybe even increase the height. You can see that once we increase the height of this button auto layout is gonna be reflected across both of these remaining elements because they have their vertical resizing set to fill container. I think we could pick a nicer color so I I'm gonna replace the black color with a blue one like this. And I'm gonna also add a shadow. So drop shadow, sample the color from the button background, and then just do a little bit of blurring and decrease the opacity significantly so that the shadow is just very, very subtle. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna duplicate this button text and type in option. Uh, this option is not going to be very bold. It's not going to have letter spacing. It's going to be also 16 pixels and I'm going to press shift A to add this to an auto layout. Add fill. That's going to be black and it's going to be transparent or translucent more like so 75% opacity of the background something like that should work. I'm going to rename this to option and then duplicate it you know let's say three times two times so it gets three items in total. Select all of these options and again press Shift A to wrap these inside an auto layout. 
this frame is going to be called options drop down menu and i'm going to increase the width of this to around 160 pixels fill container on these options and actually i'm going to duplicate one of these separately over here turn that into an into a component add a variant this variant is going to be called hover and this hover this hover state is gonna have another fill over here that's gonna be white with 20 percent opacity or something like that and then when i go to prototype i'm gonna connect the first option variant to the second option variant and say while hovering all right so this is gonna add a hover state then i'm gonna actually go to assets and use the instance of this option component and this option drop down menu and i'm gonna then duplicate and remove the initial three so that just the instances remain like this and of course they are also gonna have the settings the horizontal resizing set to fill container so that it's kind of responsive to resizing the whole menu then i'm gonna select the button that we have right here and turn that into a component and then i'm gonna select the second part of this button meaning the uh the drop down arrow auto layout i'm gonna go to prototype over here and add an interaction and this interaction is gonna be on click and it's gonna be open overlay and under this second drop down menu where i'm selecting the actual overlay i'm going to select options drop down menu all right you can see that it's being connected in this specific way i'm going to select close when clicking outside and under the overlay section right here i'm going to set the position to manual and then you can see that our option options drop down menu appears right here which means i'm going to position it in such a way that I actually like. So I don't know, let's go for like, yeah, that seems about right. And um, I'm gonna also make sure two things happen. I'm gonna round this options drop down menu so that the corners are a bit softer. So that's one, that's one thing. And the second thing, I'm actually gonna duplicate this little triangle over here copy and paste and i'm gonna rotate this and then set absolute position for this triangle for this arrow and, and i'm gonna position it right here outside this frame i'm gonna also have to uncheck clip content and set this to black as well with 75 percent opacity and maybe make it a little bit smaller like this all right this seems all right so you can see that when we actually unchecked clip content we lost the corner rounding which means i'm gonna have to do this manually with selecting the first option component instance and then adding the corners on the option instance directly so you can see that it's now being updated and also on the bottom one so this is what we get right now we can see that we, when we go to prototype and click on this interaction you can see that we get we get a nice little arrow here, right here so it's I'm overlapping into the button which we don't want so I'm just gonna move it 10 pixels I'm gonna actually also adjust the position of this arrow so that it looks kind of symmetrical with this so that these you know two arrows are centered so it needs two more pixels or so oh, one pixel to the right and yeah I think this seems about right so what should happen now is if we create a test frame I'm gonna set the size of this frame to 1000 by 600 and when we actually use this test frame to use an instance of the button i'm going to use the button right here center it against the background and then when we launch the prototype we should be able to click on the arrow and get a drop down menu like this that will also react to hovering let's see if that's the case so i have the button on my test screen i click this arrow I get a nice drop down menu and I can also hover over these individual options and they react to my hovering. Thanks to the approach we've chosen, which means a component based approach, I can easily change the color of this hover. For example, if I wanted to make this color uh, of, the, uh, of, of this whole option to invert completely, you know, like this, I can define it right here and then it's gonna update automatically across all of my prototypes 
where I'm using this component. So that's a very strong advantage of a component-based approach like this. And I do recommend using components as much as possible when you're creating interactive prototypes. So you could then, um, for example, define that the first option leads to one page and the second option leads to a second page and so on and so forth. And, you know, um, any action um, links to each of these options depends on your specific use case but this is a good template that you can use for your prototypes with a button drop down menu and if you'd like to download the source file again check the link in the description that will take you to my store and that's it if there's anything unclear let me know in the comments if this video helped you please leave a like and go check out my channel if you're interested in this type of stuff meaning interactive components and prototypes in figma thanks for tuning in and i will see you in the next one